part of a program uh, called the Truman Scholarship. And the Truman Scholarship uh, was created uh, as a memorial to President Truman to help and recruit the best and brightest young people into government service. And what's really interesting is they have a fellowship program right after you graduate, and they place you in any number of the agencies. Uh, the most popular ones seem to be Department of Transportation, uh, Department of Justice, Department of Energy, these big federal agencies. To a person, every person is frustrated and knows exactly why they didn't want to serve in government uh, in the first place or why they were scared about going into government service because, and I didn't participate in that fellowship, but what I hear from a lot of my friends was uh, they weren't incentivized to innovate. They weren't, the, the, the structures are high, very hierarchical. And so again, I think um, if you want to be involved in the federal government or government at any level, you have to feel like the work you're producing is producing results and that it's uh, meaningful to the people around you. And you know, unfortunately, I think you know, we need a dramatic, radical change um, in the HR system, uh, specifically in the federal government, so that we are really recruiting and incentivizing more talented young people to come in. And I use the Truman example because if these Truman fellows are dissatisfied with their government service, that's a problem. <laughs> I mean, they're the ones who, who are committing their lives to public service, and they're dissatisfied with the federal government. So that's something that needs to change. Can I yeah, build on that for a second? Uh, so as a corporate guy, right, like we have a, we're a Fortune 50 company. We know how to run our business. We're highly efficient and effective. And when you look at the U.S. government, the federal government, it is the worst managed organization I have ever seen. Everywhere you go, I've been in meetings. I've been to with secretaries, they don't have any objectives, goals, it's, it's ridiculous. And you could take Jennifer's idea and you could ask business people to come help you figure out how to be effective. It doesn't even have to be efficient, okay? If it was just effective. Uh, and what they You're not do- raising that bar too high. Right? Yeah, right, well, well, I think sometimes government shouldn't be that efficient. Like I think government should just, right. you know, just, it, it does not need to run on a kind of margin that a business runs on, but, um, if you go to Jennifer's thing, and you look at what the U.S. government does. They ask executives to come in, be on a, some uh, panel, and talk about policy. They never ask a series of senior executives, come in, the Department of Defense procurement system is broken, help us rip this thing apart and start off. I, I can tell you, like in my space, in the flood insurance program. We all know the flood insurance program's broke. It spends billions of dollars of our money a year. People's houses get washed away. They build them right up in the same place, and they knock away two years later, and they rebuild them. And, and like, we could fix that, okay? We could help them fix it. It would take 10 years of hard work on their part, but they really have no interest because the politicians are like, that's not my gig. Like, I'm on policy, and I get voted on, and so it's just, it, I think if you take Jennifer's concept and expand right. it to effectiveness, we could make a huge difference. I mean, oh. this is a $2 trillion enterprise. $2 trillion a year they spend of your money, and it's not done well. Why do you think we're, and I'm, I throw this out to the panel in general, why, are, why doesn't government do a better job? I know I had an experience also. I was asked to be a part of a, a panel to help about the communications of the Health Reform Act, and it was, to, to say it was dysfunctional, would, it, it would be an understatement. And it didn't get anywhere. And I'm curious why, why we're having this with the incredible amount of talent and people who do want to engage. Well, I, I just have to put out that before Jen speaks, that we put the fun in dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, then, and then Jen can speak and I'll ask. That too, yes. Um, so I, this is like my favorite question ever. I, and I, I, you know, I think when I die, I'll have like the complete answer to it. And until then, it will be incomplete. But, um, the reason, that, like I spent an enormous time on procurement when I was in the White House, for instance, a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, there's two things. We look for compliance with processes instead of outcomes. Um, actually, it's the same thing. And when your system is driven towards compliance, that's what you're gonna get. And that's why healthcare.gov failed, et cetera. Well, it didn't fail. It enrolled eight million people in heroic effort, but at first it failed. Um, but when I came to this whole agenda, I came to the perspective that the smart people that I knew in Silicon Valley were gonna be able to save government um, because you know, they knew how to do things, we just get them in, you know, it'll all be fixed. Turns out those things that block you, sometimes it is 
um, you know, what was it say? Is it law? Is it policy? Is it regulation? Is it just the practice? Is it culture? Is it just the way things are done? There's actually no law behind it. But some of those things actually are law. And if you want to blame someone for the really ridiculous number and complexity of laws that govern how you get stuff done in government, the person to blame is yourself. We created that. We elected the people that did that. We said, we don't trust you, government, to do the right thing. So we're going to build in all of these different ways that we're going to check and balance on you. The procurement system is absolutely an outcome of lack of trust between government and citizens. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna fix that until we fix this fundamental thing where we start working together again. But it is our fault. Yeah. Agreed. Oh, yeah, I wanna build on the our fault comment because one of the biggest challenges, when you think about, you think about government taking risks, right? And, and people have talked about that. Oh, you know, we have innovation yeah. in government. And people in government will talk about it, um, and, and they mean it, right? And as citizens, we talk about it, and we mean it. But tell me a time, and if you can think back for yourself, when you saw something where the government tried something new, and it didn't work out, and you were complaining to your friends at dinner um, that they tried something new, and it didn't work out. Right, what, the way the government, the way we're structured right now is that the government creates, and you were talking about this, I think yesterday, John, with the, the sort of waterfall process. Everyone has to create five-year process. Everyone has to create five-year plans. Everyone has to do things in a really big way. But in actuality, and this is where civic entrepreneurship comes in, where's, where's the opportunity for small bets to be able to uh, see if something is working or not, and then the support from the citizens as well as from the government to invest in those things. Because we all get mad when government tries something and it fails. And yet we're not trying to make, we're not necessarily all running up there saying, yes, you know what, we're pissed off that government has tried something big and it failed. Let's make sure you try something smaller next time and go a little out there and let's see if it works and then let's invest in it. Like, there's no huge lobby for that. And hopefully, I mean, candidly, I think one of the great things about the fellowship types of programs, about these programs that are involving people, is that you get enough people who have been engaged in government meaningfully for a year or for whatever it is that they start saying, hey, we actually want to change this stuff on the ground. We don't want to just talk about it at, coffee, you know, at, a, at a coffee or at a cocktail party. We really want to get in there and, and make some of that change.